Today I'm going to be showing you all how easy it is to make a juicy, delicious, flavorful meatloaf Gina Young style. This recipe right here, you're going to love it. So easy to make, doesn't require a lot of ingredients, and if you make a Gina Young style, you're going to be so happy you tried this recipe. Here's what you're going to need. You're going to need some meat. I have one pound of ground beef. I also have one pound of ground turkey. You're going to need two large eggs ketchup and milk. We have a sweet Vidalia onion, two bell peppers. We have some beautiful spices to make it taste good. Salt, pepper, and garlic powder. Onion powder and paprika. We are going to be using some chicken powder, Worcestershire sauce, and breadcrumbs. Make sure your hands are impeccably clean. You're going to love this recipe. First thing that we want to do, let's get some bell peppers nice and chopped up. Bell peppers is delicious in a meatloaf. And I like to put the two different colors and the purpose for that is because I love the color that it brings. I also love the nutrients and the flavor. Believe it or not, a lot of people don't know that different colored bell peppers taste different. And so therefore, I love to use the red and the green. So here's how we're gonna chop it up just like so. I hope y'all are having a great day today. Somebody, anybody in the comment section, let me know when is the last time you had a meatloaf? Let me know your experience. Do you love meatloaf? Did you grow up eating meatloaf like I did? I grew up eating meatloaf and I am a true fan of it. I especially like to wake up the next morning and eat a cold meatloaf sandwich. Yes, I do. I know, that sounds really interesting, right? It is interesting and it is delicious. Okay, so here's what we're gonna do. Chop those babies down just like so. We're gonna do the same thing with that sweet Vidalia onion. Now here's what I suggest, let's talk about it. You can um, put the bell peppers and onions into your meat mixture raw. You can, and it'll be delicious, but if you wanna really turn somebody's taste buds out, you wanna take this recipe up another level, try sauteing them. And that's what we're gonna do in this recipe today. We're gonna saute them for around 10 to 12 minutes, get them nice and soft, and, the, and as they saute up, they'll get soft and they'll get nice and sweet, especially that Vidalia onion. Let's chop some onion. Not too much, we don't wanna overwhelm our recipe with too much onion, but you do need it. It's gonna give such a great flavor. If I haven't said, I hope y'all are having a great day today. I hope you're having a most splendid day. So in my pan here, I have a little bit of avocado oil. It really can be any kind of oil that you want to use. Let's just get it nice and sauteed up. And once it begins to soften, salt and pepper the bell peppers and onions. Give it some flavor. Now that our peppers and onions are sauteing up, let's go ahead and put about a half a cup or a little more of the breadcrumbs into your meatloaf mixture, okay? Now, you can use a white bread if you want it to. Absolutely you can. But one thing that I never ever want you all to do when making a meatloaf, don't use too much of the filler, which is our breadcrumbs. Um, now, there's one other thing that I would like for you all to try. Just, just try it one day when you make a meatloaf. Get some uh, cornflake breadcrumbs, cornflake crumbs, use them as your breadcrumbs and talk about totally delicious. Okay, so if you get a chance or you're able to find them in your local market, try it in your meatloaf next time. You'll love me for it. Okay, so we're gonna put some Worcestershire sauce all right, about that much. Gorgeous flavor in a meatloaf. You almost need it. Okay, so we're gonna put some salt, just a little bit. Okay, paprika. This is not smack smoked paprika, but you could use it. Now I'm gonna put uh, chicken powder in here, and I'm putting a nice amount. Chicken powder does have salt in it. Okay, so you could choose to use either or, or both. Okay, and what I mean by either or is the salt, or your chicken powder. I just love the flavor that that chicken bouillon powder gives, so that's why I put it in there. And I use a tiny bit of salt. Onion powder, look, we have to get that open. Garlic powder, black pepper, just like so. And we're gonna crack two eggs. I'll get this open here in a second. Two large eggs is gonna help to bind your meatloaf together, okay? It's gonna help to hold it in the form that we're looking for. 
Make sure your eggs are nice, beautiful, and fresh just like so. And I want to talk about what my grandma would do when making a meatloaf. She would always put milk in her meatloaf. And she would pour the milk right over her breadcrumbs and she told me that the milk does something special and I totally am here to tell you I believe that to be true. I believe that to be true. Now there were times that she would just take some white bread she would pull it apart or she would use crackers or she would use oatmeal and she would pour the milk on it in a separate bowl, kind of mush it up, make it mushy and then put it in. But I've also seen her um, just take the milk just like so and pour it on top of the bread crumbs just like this, okay? So now let me get this onion powder open because I want to put a nice amount in it. I want to give it some good flavor. Right now, it smells like heaven in here right now. And we're, we're just getting started. Let's get onion powder on in a nice amount. Ah, yes, there we go. Make sure your hands are impeccably clean because I like to go in with my God-given tools, my hands. And I want to feel that meat. Now, it's a very important that you don't work the meat too much. Working the meat too much will assure you that your meatloaf will be dry and heavy. Okay, so how do you prevent it? Don't work it too much. Just basically get to the subject, which is our spices, our eggs, our milk and ketchup. Get it mixed in and then leave it alone. Because we don't want the heat from our hands to disturb the texture and the taste of our meatloaf. Our vegetables are cooking up very shortly. I'm gonna be turning that pan off. And what I'd like to do, um, I always do this. I like to take the vegetables out of the pan and throw them in the refrigerator. Why do you throw them in the refrigerator, Gina? Well, I put them in the refrigerator so I can cool them down because you would not wanna put hot veggies into your meatloaf mixture that has eggs and then we would have a scrambled egg mess, right? And that's not what we're looking for. So a good, oh, let's just say eight to 10 minutes in the refrigerator will cool them down enough where that won't happen to you. Let's go in with our impeccably clean hands. Oh, oh, oh. yes, here's what I love about my meatloaf. I love when I mix the ground beef and the turkey together. Talk about a match made in heaven. My goodness, you can only imagine right now how good this smells. It smells so good. I can smell the ketchup, the Worcestershire, the garlic and the onion powder. My goodness. Okay, this is so great and it feels good. It doesn't feel heavy. You know, it should never feel heavy like a brick. And guess what? It's mixed. Okay, we got a little bit of egg we need to still address a little bit more. But this is mixed and that's what I mean. When I tell you, I can't stress it enough, don't handle that meat too much. When I come back, I'm gonna take these veggies, give them a nice stir around, take them, put them into at the refrigerator so they can cool down, and then we'll incorporate them into our meatloaf mixture. Let's take our veggies that have sauteed, turn your pan off, let's get them into the refrigerator to cool down just like so. How simple is this? While our veggies cool down a little bit, let's go ahead and make a side dish. I feel like the, the perfect side dish to go along with the meatloaf is either one, one or the two, corn or peas. You may hear a little bit of banging going on in the background. We do have some contractors out here. They're working on something. So if you hear something, everything's A-OK. -okay. <laughs> They're working in my basement. They're working in my basement and outside. All right, so now let's get the peas in. All right, they're kind of frozen, but that's just fine. Get them in, just like so, and you see that I have some water. I want to season them salt, mm -hmm. or that's pepper, and our salt. We're going to put some sugar. I always do. You don't have to use the sugar if you don't want to. And then I'm gonna use just a little over a half a stick of butter. It's gonna finish it off. Great sweet peas that have so much flavor. Very simple ingredients. Nestle that in there just like so. <laughs> hey, wham bam. That's one down, one more to go. I have some mashed potatoes that I have made to serve along with the meatloaf. It's, it's the perfect match. The perfect match. You can use pea, peas or corn. 
with mashed potatoes. Perfect. Vegetables are nice and cool. Let's go ahead and get them nice and mixed in, just like so. Our oven is preheated 350 or 355 degrees will work for you. Okay, beautiful. All right, and when I come back, I'm gonna show you, I have a special pan. If the camera can pan down, show them that it's just the old frying pan. It's oven proof, you know, you can use it in the oven. I love to use that pan when I make a meatloaf. It makes the best meatloaf, I swear on it. So that's what I like to use. Otherwise, you could use a nine by 12 baking dish. How I like to put together our loaf. Putting together the loaf part is easy. Making a meatloaf is easy. Absolutely it is. And I'm so glad that I was able to come in and show you all how easy it is to make a meatloaf Jeannie Young style. Because once you try it once, all you gotta do is make it, try the recipe, you are going to love it. Make sure you make enough. Because your family, your friends, your loved ones, everybody is going to come back for seconds when they taste this. Trust me when I tell you. So you just want to pat it out into a loaf in such a way. Okay. I can remember my grandma had a square pan. She had a square baking pan, and that's what she used, and it was good. <laughs> All right, if you see any cracks, you know, let's just say you see a crack there, just seal it. It's so simple, okay? And then you take and you examine the meatloaf, making sure that there are no cracks, and if they are, you seal them with your finger. That way, all the beautiful juices won't come running out as they cook. So I normally like to take between a half a cup and a cup of just cold water, Put it down in the bottom. It kind of starts the meatloaf to cooking, okay? And helps it from preventing from burning when it first starts to cook, okay? So the oven is preheated. I'm gonna wash my hands really good. Anytime you're dealing with raw meat, you wash your hands so you don't transfer bacteria to anything that you're getting ready to touch. Remember that little bit of water I spoke of? Let's get just that little bit into our pan, into the oven. The next time I come back, I'm going to show you how I like to glaze the top of this meatloaf. How many of you love peas like I do? Oh my goodness. I love them. I love them when they're sweet. And then you put that butter and that salt in there. My goodness, talk about delicious. But one thing, I'm not a, I, I don't know. I haven't had canned peas since I was younger. I love peas that were in the can when I was younger. But you know, now that I'm older, I like the frozen peas. They taste more fresher and they're not as mushy. So in today's uh, recipe, I use two, I believe they're 12 ounce bags of the frozen sweet peas. Look at that, look at that baby is cooked up perfectly. This is my sauce. My sauce is the best sauce. Gina, but it is only ketchup. It's the best on top of a beautifully cooked meatloaf, Gina Young style. It goes perfect with my recipe. So just paint it just like so in this manner. And now what do we have to do? Well, we gotta put this in the uh, oven for about, oh, let's just say 10 to 15 minutes. And then when I come back, I'm gonna say an amazing prayer. We're gonna slice down into this. You get that first bite. Time to slice. <laughs> I'm using a serrated knife. Look at this. Oh my goodness. It is going to be so soft and supple. So flavorful, so tender, juicy. And I cannot stress enough how much flavor is in this meatloaf. You are going to love this recipe. Now see what we're gonna do after we slice it just like so, I'm gonna shingle it and you're gonna be able to see the inside. Mm -hmm. If you enjoyed this video, give me a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed, make sure you subscribe. Tell your family and friends and everyone you know to the whole world what Jeannie Young is doing in this kitchen on a daily basis. When I come back, you get to take a bite. Take a look everybody and if the camera if the camera can just pan down to the inside, let's do a number like this, because you have to see it. I want to prove how juicy, how gorgeous, how flavorful. Look at that. Ah, oh, yes. Oh, wee.
And then here, come on, come on. <laughs> Let's put that back in place. Mm -hmm. Come on, come on. Yes! And as always, God bless you all. Thanks for watching. Good night, but I am going to take a bite. The heck with the potatoes and the peas right now. I'm going in for the meatloaf right now. Mm, 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 mm. Oh my goodness. Take a bite. Let me know what you think. Mm. Mm, mm, mm. Mm, mm, mm. The flavor of this meatloaf. Mm, mm, mm. will make you jump for joy. And as always, God bless. Good night. Make yourself.